Hey guys, Fred here. The following clips are from Elders Rising, episode 9. And hope you enjoy. The Warnings of George Washington. They served to organize factions, to put in the place of the delegated will of the nation, the will of a party, often a small but artful and enterprising minority. Let me warn you in the most solemn manner against the baneful effects of the spirit of party. Okay, that's not about the judicial, but that's warning about being party, party politics. O- party over principle. Party over principle, party over policy. Yeah. Which we, I have talked about that quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Because it's dangerous. You look at it, and that's what they've done. They've done uh, what's best for the party, what's best for my party, not what's best for my constituents not what's best for the republic what's best for the party how do we grant ourselves more power and and authority Mm -hmm. there are of no concern of what's best for the republic or what's best for us or how or if we're defending the constitution yeah i mean all you have to do is go to google and type in um, the Founding Fathers' warnings. And if you look and you think about it, it's really quite amazing the way that the Constitution is written, the way that the Bill of Rights is written. They foresaw every single thing that the government would try to do, and we're watching things play out in front of our eyes, and we're watching just straight, uncontrolled... Um, usurpations and blatantly unconstitutional actions and laws the only reason it's working is because of the majority of the population don't understand the constitution or don't care well mostly they don't understand and they don't care yeah i I think because they don't understand they don't care i think that it's one of those things where it's like everybody enjoys the freedoms that we have but they don't realize that the freedoms that we have come because of the constitution and they're God-given freedoms. I, it, don't don't get me. Don't let me get that all mixed up. But you know our, what I'm saying. Yeah, our d- freedoms they, are not granted by the government. They're granted by God. They don't understand what's protecting our freedoms. Yes, and we we have spoken quite a bit about um, property, life, liberty, property, um, and that's a one of the you know just fundamentals of a what our nation's about but also what our um our religion is about being lds and it's funny because i was just reading first nephi chapter four this morning and this is where nephi goes and gets the brass plates and i chapter 11 or not chapter 11 um, verse 11 really stuck out to me as i was reading and it said, um, 1 Nephi 4, 11, And the Spirit said unto me again, Behold, the Lord hath delivered him into thy hands, yea. And I also knew that he had sought to take away mine own life, yea. And he would not hearken unto the commandments of the Lord. And he had also taken away our property. So, property is... Be, Property is a big deal, not only to, um, you know, us um, temporally here in in our nation, in the way that we view and value things, but it's also important to God. One of the things that makes me think of, and this is just... Because he lays that out as the reason that, yeah, it's okay to freaking smite him. Yeah, the, the thing that it makes me think of, though, is why is property important? And it makes me realize, like, how do you, how do you teach good principles to your children if you don't have a, a place that you can call home, if you don't have a place that you can grow and nurture your children in, if you don't have property to allow yourself to, to that space, if the government's coming in and taking, taking anything that they want, you, you, you don't have, it makes it far more difficult to 
teach the principles of, of the gospel, to teach the principles of God to your children and to the next generation. It makes it harder for that the ideas of, of freedom, of free agency, to, to live in the, in, the next, in the next two, three, five generations. Because you didn't have that, I mean that that's I don't know that's the thing that comes to mind is in reading that is like why would God value that? Why would why would why would He articulate that to us through the Scriptures? And that's I I don't know the answer. I'm not saying that I'm right, but that's what comes to my mind is part of part of having property is being a steward, learning responsibility, learning how to cultivate that growth in your children, in your family. And being able to do that, and being enabled to do that, and that's a that's a huge part of this. If if we consider this life as a time for us to learn how to how to be as as our Father is, then that's that's we 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 need that experience. We need that because that's how we grow. It also gives us the opportunity to take care of. What is the Lord's? Because, yeah, you, we can go and we can buy property and we can buy, you know, 10, 11, 1,000 acres. And you can trash it, you can scar it, you can salt the very earth. You can, you know, you can do all these different things. And it's, I mean, in the eyes of the law, it's your property. But ultimately, it belongs to God and you are taking that responsibility of taking care of what is his showing respect yeah and that's that's the interesting thing is like especially when you get into like environmental issues there's there's so many people who are like they try to use the environment as a club to make people be behave in a certain way but yet true principle is to preserve what god has given us and to to take care of it and to be good stewards of the land and and (laughs) i mean that's I, he he's, he's given these things to us to make use of lumber for building material for a source of heat, um, you know, mm. and animals for clothing, for food, for um, for thousands and thousands of years. They use the bones to make into tools and, and everything like that. Mm-hmm. Everything that's been put on this earth was put here for us to use, not to abuse, but to use. Mm-hmm. And going to the environmental and the environmentalist claims and stuff like that they're like oh the loggers will just go down and they'll cut down an entire forest well no they won't because they'll run out of they'll run out of you know lumber they're, they'll work so, themselves out of a job yeah they'll work themselves out of a job and then and ruin industries yeah and what what these environmentalists don't take into consideration with specifically with like logging is these companies either lease land or they own the land. They cut the trees down. Yeah, it's very well managed, very beautiful. Grow it but they again. go through, they cut it down, they harvest. Then, you know, they just kind of go in this big circle or however they do it. But after they've logged an area, typically they go through, they pull out stumps. They, you know, they go through and clean it up and then they reseed. They replant so that they can, in fact, be sustainable. It'll be sustainable. Because if they just go down and they cut down all the trees, then they're out of anything. And Again, thanks for watching Elders Rising, episode 9. Um, well, buddy, if you like, subscribe and share. And have a great day. Rock the party, everybody. Regardless of what Mitch says, rock the party.